another reason why Hanukkah and these parshias are right together with each other. Because HaKadosh Baruch Hu tells us that while Yosef, Yosef hit his darkest moments when he's thrown into the pit. He's thrown into the pit. He begs the brothers, please give me another chance. And the brothers don't listen. And they sell him. The darkest moment in Yosef's life. Nothing could be darker. But you know what HaKadosh Baruch Hu is saying? You're crying. You're sad. Yaakov, you're all upset. I, to me, I look at it as the greatest thing. Where we see tragedy, HaKadosh Baruch Hu sees tremendous potential. Because what's happening at the same time? It says, Shvatim ho asukim shel Yosef. While the Shvatim were busy in the sale of Yosef. The Yosef ho asuk b'sako y'v'ta'anisoy. Reuven ho asuk b'sako y'v'ta'anisoy. V'hoi Yaakov ho asuk b'sako y'v'ta'anisoy. Yaakov, Yosef, Reuven, they're on their sackcloth and they're fasting and they're sad. This is a terrible time. And Yehuda ya Yosek Likachisha. Yehuda was busy taking a wife. What was HaKadosh Baruch Hu doing? V'HaKadosh Baruch Hu ya Yosek Uvoyre Oyreshel Melech HaMashiach. While all this tragedy is going on, it all seems horrible. But what is HaKadosh Baruch Hu doing? He's paving the way for Mashiach. Think about it. Yosef endures a horrible, horrible existence right now, but he's actually turning into a leader, to a leader that one day Mashiach ben Yosef is going to come from. What's happening at the same time? Yehuda is dethroned. Yehuda was a leader, is not kicked out. So Yehuda leaves the family. What happens when he leaves the family? Tamar. Tamar marries his first child, his second child, his third child. And then, Tamar, without Yehuda knowing, Tamar comes together with Yehuda. And what happens? Peretz is born. And Peretz, eventually, father to son, father to son, is the, the great-great-grandfather of, of, of Yishai. And then David HaMelech. And from David comes Melech HaMashiach. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu, while we're all seeing tragedy, what is God seeing? HaKadosh Baruch Hu is seeing potential. And I'm going to tell you something that's going to make you fall off your chair. You will never, ever forget this, I promise you. Listen to this. What happens? What happens when there's light? When there's light, there's clarity. When there's light, there's understanding, right? You shut the lights, there's nothing. You can't see anything. You can't see the beauty of the room. But as soon as there's light, there's clarity. You can see everything, right? Everything looks beautiful. How long does it take for light to travel from the sun here? It takes eight minutes. It takes eight minutes. How many candles do we have? We have eight candles. You know what the message is? The message is that HaKadosh Baruch Hu created a world that the light does not come right away. We're in a situation, all we see is darkness, we're upset, we're sad, we're praying to God. What are you doing to us? But God is saying, wait a minute. Wait eight minutes. Wait eight lights of Hanukkah. You will see that what I'm doing to you is the best thing possible. I'm paving the way to success, so I'm paving the way to Mashiach. I'm doing this for you. Have patience. It takes eight minutes for the light to come. And once the light is going to come, you're going to see everything. Everything is going to fall into place. And that's the eight lights of Hanukkah. The eight lights of Hanukkah remind us that it takes time. With time, you understand why things happened in your life. You have the same concept with Yosef HaTzadik again. Yosef HaTzadik who does he marry? He marries Osnas. Who's Osnas? Osnas was the daughter of Dina. Dina was the one that was raped by Shechem. She was raped by Shechem. This girl, everybody looked at her. 
as illegitimate. They looked at her as darkness. They looked at her as that's it. They wrote her off. Yaakov Avinu wrote the, shame, the name of Hashem and sent her. She ended up in Egypt. She was, she was brought up by Potiphar. She ended up marrying Yosef. And what this shows us, if there is a little bit of light, just a drop of light, wait, and it's going to grow. Hanukkah starts out with one light, and then it slowly, slowly grows to eight lights. Slowly grows to eight lights. At the time of Hanukkah, besides the Gzerot, besides the decree of no Shabbos, no Rosh Chodesh, no Milah, I want to tell you a couple of other decrees, and you will see how harsh of a time they lived through. They couldn't study Torah. They couldn't absorb, uh, observe mitzvahs. It was illegal to have a Sefer Torah. You weren't allowed to own one. You were not allowed to mention the name of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. You were not allowed to say, Bezrat Hashem. You weren't allowed to say anything like that. You were not allowed to refer to yourself as a Jew. You had to refer to yourself as a Greek. It was forbidden. You weren't allowed to do the Avodah and the Beis HaMikdosh. You weren't allowed to celebrate any of the Yom Em Tovim, and you had to celebrate their holidays. And not only that, in the Beis HaMikdosh, Titus erected a Tzalem. He erected an idol. And they forced the Jews to make sacrifices to the idols and to eat from those sacrifices. Non-kosher food, they would sacrifice pigs and they forced the Jews to eat those pigs. They would tax the Jews so heavily that they would be completely impoverished. And they forced the Jews to remove the doors, their front door, so they should never have privacy. And according to one understanding, Jews themselves wanted to take off the doors because they forced them to write En li chelik Yisrael on the door. I don't have a portion in, in the God of the Jews. So the Jews themselves wanted to take off the doors. And if anyone was ever caught circumcising the son, the child, they would kill the child and they would hang the child on the, on, on the mother's neck and they would parade the father and mother to their execution. And it says also, that they did not allow Taharat mishpacha. Any woman that went to the mikvah, any Yavani, any Greek that saw her, that spotted her, was able to take her for a wife. We're talking about extreme darkness. And from this extreme darkness, what ends up happening? We end up having an entire yantav of Hanukkah. Why? Because what is Hanukkah? What's the essence of Hanukkah? The essence of Hanukkah is expansion. The essence of Hanukkah is to expand. Do you know what the essence of Simcha is? The essence of Simcha is also to expand. When you see a person relaxing on a couch, he's happy, he's on the beach, he's not feeling happy with himself. Yes, there's room for relaxation. In Yiddishkeit also. So this way you could serve God better. But if that's your goal in life, you work 70, 80 years, so one day you could retire, so you could sit on the front lawn and watch the birds fly and wait for the black car to pick you up, that is not happiness. Happiness is expansion. What the Hashmanoim did, where they were boxed into a corner and they were forced to expand themselves. That's the definition of Simcha. And therefore, Hanukkah is very much synonymous with Simcha. When we look back and we look at all these decrees that have happened, and we say, how is it possible to surmount all these decrees? But HaKadosh Baruch Hu tells us, remember those candles. Remember what happened at the time of Antiochus. Remember how hopeless we were. And yet HaKadosh Baruch Hu turned it into complete happiness. Here too. Who knows, maybe HaKadosh Baruch Hu is paving the way to something great. So let's hope and let's pray that Mashiach, who we've been waiting for, 
for so many years that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is now paving the way in our lifetime. We're the fortunate ones, although many of the Chachamim said they wouldn't want to live at the time of Mashiach because it's going to be a very, very difficult time, a time of war, a scary time. But it could also be a very, very good time. And that time, when is it going to be? It says, Yaakov Chevel Nachalosei. What is Yaakov Chevel Nachalosei? So my Rebbe once said that at the end of time, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going to have a rope, a big, long rope. And he's going to grab one end and, and the other end. And he's going to shake it. And you know what it means when he's going to shake it? It means that towards the end of time, a lot of Jews, unfortunately, it's so sad, that's what we have to do as much care of as we can. He's going to shake it so hard that a lot of Jews are going to fall off. And only the real strong Jews are going to be able to hold on. And we have to make sure to know this, that the end is coming. Hold on tight. Don't let go of that rope. Because at the end, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going to give us the life where we're going to be a light onto the nations, where everybody's going to be able to point to Klal Yisrael and say, wow, I want to be like them. But at that point, just remember, at that point, ain't the Kablam Geirim. Once Mashiach comes, the curtain is closed. We don't accept any converts. We don't accept, there's no Balachu. It, it's, it's done. It's done. And therefore, we have to hold on extremely tight and let uh, get our brothers and sisters to come on board before Mashiach comes. This way, everybody's in it because we want every Jew a part of it. We love every Jew. Every single person is so, so special. Let's work hard. Let's try to make this happen. And Be'ezrat Hashem, we should be zochet to see Ne'Mashiach Tzitkenu B'mheru B'yameinu. Amen. Afrei Lecha